and today I'm showing you a new bounty hunter build I made for Jug using the new Mini Rex robot. I tried it out right after the Mini Rex came out and I've been using it ever since. And now I've got a ton of people asking me about it. Here's the leaderboard exactly 3 hours after reset 2 days ago just to give you all an idea of what we're dealing with here. It says 87 at first because the leaderboard only updates every 2 minutes or so, but it was 88 wins in 3 hours, or 29 wins per hour. So here are the stats. It's a 6 focus build to maximize damage. You will need to get Mini Rex P. The EXP works too and can be useful against real players, but for speed the full P version is better. I'm using Improbability Gate on my Ox, Blood Bullet on Gun, and Inferno Primary Core Focus Fury. If you don't have the Inferno promo but you do have Frozen Rift, you can use that instead and then get Infinity Titan for Primary, so basically swapping the Primary and Gun Cores. Or you can use Blood Bullet and Infinity Titan, which I found to be pretty good as well when I was testing. The 660 energy is enough for 2 smokes, Focus Fury, and Improbability Gate. Here I have 2 tech boosts and Eternal Enhance. If you don't use War Commander, what I would do is put on another tech boost on primary, move 3 points of energy to tech, and drop the smoke to level 6. The extra tech will make your smoke better, so the setup is more worth it overall. You will notice that I moved some deck stat mods to support. You don't have to do this, but I've tested a lot of things and I think the extra support is optimal and is what really makes this build different. Besides the fact that the extra aux damage is going to be necessary as you'll see later on, the extra support helps you to go first and reduces your chance of getting stunned. Both of these things increase speed and make it safer. In fact, even though the defenses are relatively low for Jug build, I've actually found this build to be safer than Blood Mage and the going first and not getting stunned are part of the reason. The other reasons are the insane amount of blocks and the fact that you get way more bloodlust per turn doing massive damage on a single target instead of spreading the damage. Alright, so this is how this video is going to work. If you've seen my older Jug videos, what I would do is show every single one of the 135 possible NPC combos and then list the number of rounds it would take for each one. It was very comprehensive, um, which is great, but I think that would take way too long if I did it again, and I would have to fast forward a ton, which means I wouldn't be able to do a voiceover. So instead, for this video, I've broken the NPCs into 6 distinct groups. The NPCs in the same group can be treated the same when you encounter them, and for the purpose of me explaining the strategy, are more or less interchangeable. What I'm going to do is show you a few examples for what to do against each of these groups and then you can refer back to this chart if you want to try the build. And I promise that if you do try the build, this chart will make perfect sense. For those who haven't seen my other videos, I'll quickly go over how I determine what the average speed of a jet build really is. The first step is to calculate the effective rounds for a particular combo. Effective rounds is the number of 3 turn rotations that take place. After you kill one NPC, one round is only equal to 2 turns, not 3, and that is accurately reflected when we use effective rounds. Step 2 is to find the spawn rate of the particular NPC combo. This is important because the combos that are more common are going to have a bigger impact on your overall speed. Here's a chart showing all of the possible spawn rates. It looks complicated, but the way it works is quite simple. First, the game decides the level of the NPC that you get. On the top position, there are 4 possibilities, level 29, 30, 31, and 32. So each of these has a 1 in 4 or 25% chance of showing up. After that, it randomly chooses an NPC in that level. So if it chose 29, there are 3 possible choices, Heavy Mechalid, Exile Soldier, and Valerie. So the chance of any one of those showing up is 1 4th times 1 3rd. The spawn rate of a combo is found by multiplying the spawn rates of the two NPCs involved. The last step is to total the results you got for all 135 possible NPC combos. After recording the data myself for this build, I found that it has an average speed of about 5.42 rounds 
with the first kill almost always being on round 3, and the second kill on round 6.62. Of course, this doesn't take into account stuns, going first, and other RNG factors. Still, from personal experience, this build is easily the fastest you can use right now. If you follow my advice perfectly, you should be able to get about 27 to 29 wins an hour if you really concentrate. If you can't do this, I can guarantee that you are probably doing something wrong. Okay, now it's finally time to take a look at some example battles so you can learn how to do it right. First, let's start off with Easy Guys, Group F, combinations involving Heavy Mecha Chalid 29, Pirate Soldier, Lionheart Soldier, Corbett Ninja, and Void Creature. All of these can be killed in 3 rounds guaranteed, without even having to use Robot or both Dread Cores. Since you don't need them, you can save them for the higher health NBC, which will allow you to finish the battle in 6 rounds in every case except when they're paired with Electro Hazard or Frost Demon from Group A. Here's Corporate Ninja and Group C Administrator 12, a pretty standard NPC. First, you're gonna use Smokescreen, of course. But with six round Group F combos, it doesn't usually matter which NPC you kill first, as long as you save the robot for the higher health NPC, since you're only gonna use the robot once per battle, anyways. Now you're gonna finish off with Focus Fury, or Improbability Gate if you need to, but you should only use Gate if you really need to, as a general rule of thumb. So now you're gonna smoke again, and use any random attack to finish him. Use Blood Bullet, and then Improbability Gate. Easy. Next example, I'm going to go for the Group F NPC first, in this case, Pirate Soldier. Uh, just to show you that it doesn't make much of a difference either way you do it. However, the one rule to this that you really should always follow is if there's one NPC that's a guaranteed 3 shot, like Pirate Soldier, and the other one isn't guaranteed, obviously go for the guaranteed one first. Heavy Mecha Chalid 34 is a good B NPC, so it's not guaranteed for them. So in this case, it does make sense to prioritize the Pirate Soldier. And I'll talk about that more once we get to group B. For the last group F example, I'm just gonna show you what happens when you get a group A NPC like Electro Hazard. Here, um, you have to go for the Magicalid first. Otherwise, um, it's gonna screw the whole thing up if you can't kill Electro Hazard in three shots. So these will be the only combos you get that are going to take 7 rounds in total instead of 6. The group E NBCs include Dragonoid Spawn and Evil Hazard. They also have very low health and can be killed just as fast as Group F in every case. The reason why they're in a group of their own is because their physical defenses are insanely high, which makes them a bit more tricky to deal with. So instead of Smoke, Blood Bullet, and Focus Fury to kill them, I like to do something a bit different called the Robot First Method. Here we have Evil Hazard and Velestra. So instead of using Smoke first, I'm not gonna use Robot first. Using Robot first will mean that it will cool down on round 6, so it'll still be a 6 rounder. I'm gonna use Smoke on the second turn, and now I'm gonna finish off with Focus Fury or Improbability Gate. And then I'm gonna Smoke again, and like I said, um, Robot is gonna cool down on round 6, so once it's cool down, I'm gonna use it again, and it'll be a 6 rounder. Here's just one more example with Dragonoid Spawn and Frost Demon from Group A. Again, Electro Hazard and Frost Demon will be the only 7 rounders you get with these. Um, I believe the bot first method is just slightly better than the smoke first method for Dragonoid Spawn and Evil Hazard because they have a bit more health than the Group F NPCs. And when the NPCs have more health, the Dread Cores are going to do more damage in relationship to Blood Bullet, um, 
which makes the robot smoke Dreadcore stronger than smoke blood blood and a drug core. Alright, now we're moving on to the medium and high health groups. Group D is quite interesting. It includes Overlord Guard and Valerie, which are medium health. For the most part, they act like groups B and C, which are the actual high health NPCs, which I kill using the standard method of Smoke, Bot Special, and then Core to finish. However, this can be risky against Overlord Guard and Valerie, because if your damage ranges are too high, or if smoke or bot crits, you'll end up making them heal. That's why I suggest avoiding attacking them first if you can. So here I got Gamma Guard and Overlord Guard. I'm gonna go for the Gamma Guard first. You'll see that if I do that, I can actually often manage to get a 6 rounder by using my normal bot as a finisher. So once the Gamma Guard is dead, I'm gonna smoke again. And normally for high health bosses, I would have to wait until round 7 for my bot special to cool down again. But since Overlord Guard and Valerie are in medium health, I can often use the normal bot to kill on round 6. Here's Valerie instead of Overlord Guard showing the same thing. Valerie is a bit tougher than Overlord Guard, her defense is really high. You're gonna need to save the improbability gate for her for there to be a chance to kill with her own robot. Fortunately, group C NPCs like Lawman can use the good with the Fairy, like I just did now. And so now I'm gonna smoke again. Then after this, I'm gonna use the improbability gate. And now you can see, um, she's in range to be killed by the normal robot. For this last example, we got Electrohazard, so we do have to go for Overlord Guard first. Overlord Guard heals when he's at 525 health, so like I mentioned before, I would not do Smoke and then Robot, because it might make him heal depending on the damage ranges or if I crit. So this time I went with the Focus Fury and then the Improbability Gate to kill him in 3 hits. You'll see that it doesn't matter if I use robot or not, this will still be a 7 rounder. Finally, Group C. This is what I like to call the standard group. The majority of your battles are going to involve at least one of these. This is the standard rotation of smoke, bot special, and then kill. If you get a pair of two Group Cs, or an even higher tiered NPC like A or B, the bot will cool down on round 7, and it will be a 7 rounder. Here's any old example, uh, using two group C's, XL Soldier and Velestra. It usually doesn't matter at all who you go for first, since it's all the same rotation. You're pretty much going to end up winning when the bot cools down on round 7, no matter what, like I said. But here, I went for Velestra first, because there's actually a tiny chance that the XL Soldier can block your initial smoke strike which will mess the whole thing up. So you'll see, once I put on the second smoke, I just wait until my bot cools down again on round 7. Here's another example of two group Cs, Gamma Guard and Administrator 12, where I want to demonstrate why this build is so amazing. So not only does it not get stunned a lot in first place due to the high support, but if you get stunned early, it won't affect the rotation because you only need two turns of smoke. Now, if you get stunned later in the game, like I'm about to right now, yep, there's the stun. It might actually literally speed things up since you'll often still be able to kill on round 7 once the bot cools down. Group B is exactly the same as Group C, but they're a bit tougher. When I say they're a bit tougher, I mean that you almost always need to use Improbability Gate instead of Focus Fury as the finisher, and even then, it will sometimes spare them and screw the battle up, depending on the damage ranges and how much bloodlust they get. There's no way around this unless maybe you got higher support to move Ogs damage, 
or if you don't use War Commander. But because of this issue, I would always attack the other NPC first. Here we have Yeti Hulk, which is definitely the hardest of the three Group B NPCs to kill. Um, you're most likely not going to be able to kill him in three turns if he uses his Berserkers and Cheap Shots and they connect and give him way too much Bloodlust. Um, you might still be tempted to go for him first since he's so strong and might kill you, but I still wouldn't. He has a ton of defense. If you attack the other NPC, you'll gain a ton of Bloodlust, which should sustain you until you can kill them and it should be more manageable. In this example, we have two Group B NPCs together, Double Snork. Obviously, there's no way to avoid attacking them here. Fortunately, Snork and Heavy Mecha Chalid, um, level 34, are both 3 shotable more often than they're not. So if that works out, the rest of the battle should play out just fine. Alright, we're on the last group. Group A includes Electrohazard and Frost Demon, which are the two absolute worst NPCs for just about any jump build. As I mentioned before, these are the only two that will cause you to take 7 rounds when paired with a low health NPC. The good thing is, with everything else, it also only takes 7 rounds, which is fantastic compared to other jump builds. Take a look at Electrohazard and Lawman, for example. Obviously, go for the Lawman first. You can kill him in 3 turns like normal. Um, just use the Smoke Bot. And the next turn, I'm going to use the Fork. Once that's done, you should be able to kill Electro Hazard on round 7 when the bot cools down just like any other high health combo. So, that's definitely not bad. Alright, so this is a very unique situation. I'm going to show you what to do when both NPCs are from Group A. In this case, we have Double Electro Hazard. Now, you're going to have to use the Static Grenade Method. On Round 3, instead of using the Dread going for the kill, I'm going to use Static Grenade, because the Dread Core wouldn't have killed anyways. With this, you will prevent Electro Hazard from healing. If he had healed, it would have taken 5 rounds. Here, I killed him on round 4. Once one of them is dead, you should be able to kill the other one on round 8. So it will be a round 4, and then round 8. Considering these are the only two combos out of 135, that's pretty good. Okay, that's it for examples. Give the build a shot if you have the right gear. You can try out different variations if you like to, but I think it's already more or less optimal um, if you don't use War Commander, and it is at least for sure the fastest strategy you can be using right now. A higher level smoke isn't going to help, I don't think. And I wouldn't use Frozen Rift because 3 Jet Quarters is just too much. So if you just follow the instructions in this video, you should be able to get 27 to 29, maybe even 30 wins an hour. Alright, uh, I guess that's it. Thank you guys. I hope this video was good, and I'll see you later.